What's going on guys? Stix here with the Token Minorities bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO and today I'm bringing you a deck centered around Vikavolt GX from Guardians Rising and uh, by the way I just want to let you guys know that there are people home and working today so I have to be a little bit quieter as to not disturb or disrupt them so I apologize for that but I'm still going to be able to uh, be myself with this but also I mean again around Vikavolt and before I get into the deck just a reminder that if you guys like this video or found it helpful please leave a like drop a comment click that subscribe button helps us out quite a bit and lets us do more cool stuff for you guys and as for the question of the day one of the most influential cards released in the Guardians Rising expansion was Choice Band the attacks of the Pokemon this card is attached to do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon GX or active Pokemon EX that is incredible, especially in a format where the only damage boosting tool we had was, uh, I think it was only Fighting Fury Belt. There might be another obscure one, but the only one that was really relevant at all was Fighting Fury Belt, and that only worked on basics. Choice Band not only works on basics and non-basics, it works on GXs and EXs as well. It's also very reminiscent of Silver Bangle, except, again, it can be attached to EXs and GXs, the Pokemon that it hits for extra damage. So my question of the day is, do you guys prefer Choice Band or Muscle Band? Now, Muscle Band uh, was released, I believe, in the XY set. And for those of you that might not remember what it was, it was just the uh, Pokemon this card is attached to do 20 more damage. Doesn't matter to who, it's just literally plus 20 on every single one of your attacks. That is great. And it's actually, I mean, it works all the time while choice band works only on GX's and EX's but it does 30 extra damage and I know that in a lot of cases the math uh, for the addition of 20 versus 30 is actually pretty significant but my question of the day is do you guys prefer the consistent hit everything of muscle band or do you prefer the stronger hit only EX's and GX's of choice band if you had to ask me I'm one of those guys that I prefer consistency over situational use now don't get me wrong I am not saying in any way, shape, or form that Choice Band is not good. It is an incredible card that deserves a spot in many, many different decks and will be highly influential and impactful in this metagame. Choice Band is phenomenal and I don't want to give you guys any inkling that I think otherwise. I'm just saying as a as a kind of form of preference, I, I would prefer just 20 extra damage in uh, in just against everything than 30 extra damage against EXs and GXs. That being said, I mean, if there are certain decks where you need that 30 extra damage, then yes, by all means. I just, in a very general situation, I prefer Muscle Band over Choice Band. But again, just my opinion. I'm actually very curious to see your guys' thoughts on this. So leave that in the comments section below and why. Again, super curious to see which, uh, what type of preferences you guys have. But anyway, onto the deck, like I said, centered around Vikavolt, GX, and those of you that have uh, watched other content of mine, you've seen that I've done decks with Vikavolt with Strong Charge. I think I paired it with Dragonite, and Strong Charge is absurdly good. You just search your deck for a Grass and a Lightning, and you can attach it to your Pokemon in any way you like. It pairs perfectly with Vikavolt GX, not only because we're able to just uh, add to the line, like not have to run a completely separate line of Pokemon, but the fact that the attack that this deck is centered around Zoop, Super Zap, Zooper Zap Cannon, wow, Super Zap Cannon, uh, requires you to discard two energy from this Pokemon as four energy, so it's pretty expensive. However, that's just two manual attachments and a single strong charge. So you get this powered up very, very quickly. And don't get me wrong, the rest of Vikavolt's attacks are actually pretty solid. One energy strong charge, or charge beam, not strong charge, that is the... I'm going to mess up these uh, names so much during this because you have Super Zap Cannon, Strong Charge, Charge Beam, Gigatron. And I'm, I'm just going to mess these up. I'm just warning you ahead of time. But Strong... Uh, I'm already messing it up. Charge Beam is a very solid attack on its own. For a single energy, you do 50 damage, and you attach an energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. So a single energy with a Choice Man, you can potentially do 80 damage. That is incredibly strong. But Super Zap Cannon, 180 210 with a choice band you're able to one shot i believe every single basic and uh stage one gx in the game i think i'm not 100 percent sure but off the top of my head i don't think that there are any stage ones that have like 220 hp then again i could very well be wrong I, if i'm wrong definitely let me know uh, i know you guys love pointing that out <laughs> but i mean either way still 210 damage four energy and we have ways of taking care of 
the discard cost of Super Zap Cannon. So very, very nice. Great synergy between the two Vika Volts. And finally, the GX attack. Now, you might look at it and think that it's very underwhelming, which, I mean, on the surface it is. Four energy only does 60 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, so it doesn't even attack your opponent's active Pokemon. So first of all, that's kind of a, well, I normally want to attack what's in front of me because that's probably the thing that's hitting me, and it only does 60 to the bench. I mean, yeah, that can take out, like, Eevees, but the new Trubbish isn't knocked out. Even things like Grubbin aren't knocked out. So 60 damage seems very underwhelming, and it can't hit for weakness, so, I mean, you just kind of are like, well, yeah, I'm just not going to use Gigatron. However, with a wide lens, you can one-shot Shaman. Like, just slap a, uh, slap a wide lens onto Vikavolt, and you one-shot any Shaman that your opponent has on the bench. If your opponent has three Shaman, you immediately win the game with a Gigatron GX. So, very, very niche, but very, very strong. And unfortunately... I have not been able to do that yet because there's a glitch on TCGO where Gigatron GX, even with the wide lens attached, does not hit Shaman for weakness. So it's something that I really want to do, and I was kind of trying to wait to do that. Like, I was trying to wait to do this deck before uh, until, the, until that was patched through and you were able to hit Shamans, but I decided, you know what, screw it. I like this deck way too much. I'm just going to go ahead and show it off, especially with Shaman dying down quite a bit recently with the release of Lele, so people just aren't running Shaman as much. I still think Shaman will have a resurgence, and Gigatron is still really cool being able to just one-shot a Shaman on the bench and take two free prizes, but overall, haven't been using Gigatron that much, so I'm not too worried, but I still am throwing a wide lens in there just to show you that this would be the build that you would use if you have, uh, well, when you are able to snipe the bench for weakness with Gigatron GX. As for the rest of Pokemon, running one Shaman just for that draw support, just be able to play that down and draw more cards. Running two Lele, this is kind of going to be my standard, I mean my standard numbers of these two Pokemon, one Shaman, two Lele, just in terms of support, just because Lele is so much better and searches out supporters. And then finally, well, I guess I'll talk about Coco in a little bit, but for the line of Vika Volts running 4-3, uh, of Grubbin and Charge Bug. I'm running a little heavier line of Charge Bug just because with Grubbin you're able to take advantage of Forced Giant Plants. So you are able to evolve into a Charge Bug immediately. You cannot rare candy on the turn on the first turn with Forced Giant Plants, so that's why I'm just putting a higher number of Charge Bugs so that we are able to take advantage of that. And then 3-2 of Vikavolt and Vikavolt GX. Now you might be thinking, why are there five when there's only four Grubbin? Well, Vikavolt, the uh, one from Sun and Moon, is actually the engine of this entire deck. Like, yeah, Vikavolt GX is what this deck is really centered around, but this Vikavolt is the engine of the deck. If you don't have it, you're going to be having a very bad time. So I want to make sure that I always have it when I need it, and I've run into situations where I've had to discard one, one's been prized, and I've just been kind of like, well, I don't know what to do anymore. So I decided to run three and it's actually been working out really well for me. It hasn't clunked up anything. So three, two is what I've been running of Vikavolt and Vikavolt GX. And finally one Tapu Koko, just a great addition in lightning decks because Sky High Claw is just consistent. 130 damage is always nice with no drawback. And then Tapu Thunder is actually the GX attack that you're going to be using quite a bit in this deck. Uh, well, actually it's the GX attack that you're going to be using more often than not, even though this deck is centered around Vikavolt. But Tapu Thunder, just 50 damage times the number of energy on your opponent's side of the field. Just a very good way of being like, yeah, you have a little bit too much energy. I'm just going to delete whatever is in front of me. And also Arrow Trail, in case you didn't notice, this Vikavolt has a nasty 3 retreat cost. This Tapu Koko is our way of kind of getting out of that. Yeah, our Vikavolt's active. Play down Tapu Koko, move lightning energy to it. And then all of a sudden, Koko's active and you're hitting for 130. So Tapu Koko, not only a great attacker and a more realistic GX attack, but it is a way of getting the nasty three retreat Vikavolt out of the active. One thing I also noticed, Vikavolt GX has one retreat and regular Vikavolt has three retreat. I'm not exactly sure what sense that makes, but I'm just going to roll with it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, on to the items. This is the one that I'm most on the fence about. Energy Recycler. Okay, in every Vikavolt deck, I highly recommend running some form of heavy energy recursion besides just Super Rod. I mean, Super Odd, yeah, it can get you back a couple energy, but you normally want to get some Pokemon with that too. So you normally don't get enough energy to be able to strong charge from the deck. 
strong charge has to be from the deck not from the discard pile so having things in the discard pile is just wasted resources so heavy energy recursion is necessary i'm running energy recycler however i will probably switch to brock's grit uh, right in the middle of this live just because energy and recycler and brock's grit is what i've been going back and forth on just heavy energy recursion when late in the game you've gone for a super zap cannon way too much there's too much energy in the discard pile you're able to just get those back in the deck to be able to strong charge one field blower so that we can i mean get rid of stadiums get rid of tools all that good stuff and particularly on garbador so because ability shut off just destroys this deck like if my abilities are shut off i can't do much of anything field blower gives us a fighting chance two four of level ball and ultra ball just level ball for uh, Grubbin and Charge Bug, Ultra Ball for everything else. Two Rare Candy to potentially go from Grubbin into straight into Vika Volt if you're not able to evolve into a Charge Bug turn one with Forest. Just a nice little option that you have for VS Seeker to reuse the supporters. And then as for these supporters, 332, my normal kind of standard line of Sycamore and, and Lysander, just what I've been going with in guardians more shuffle draw less just discard everything then as with these tech supporters one skyla to be able to search out for like that one field blower or rare candy choice band really just the one thing that you need this deck uh, revolves around a lot of combos and a lot of things being either in your hand together or on the field together skyla lets you search out that one piece that you need lily is just a great lele into lily first turn so that you have like if you have charge bug in your hand but you just need a forest of giant plants or you have a rare candy just need a vika volt lily's nice for getting a big hand turn one and finally hex maniac i mean we have a bunch of abilities that we don't rely on between turns or during our opponent's turn so hex maniac's able to just shut off our opponents get let them uh slow down a little bit and also uh, potentially shut down item lock which destroys this deck <laughs> as for the stadiums three one of Forest of Giant Plants and Rough Seas. Forest, you really, really just want it first turn. Like, you don't need it after turn one, really, at all for the rest of the game. So, I want to have a heavy enough line to where I can get it turn one, but not heavy enough to where I have four of them because I really don't need them. And I'd rather have a Rough Seas just to be able to take advantage of Vika Volt's gigantic bulk and go from there. So, I ran three one of Forest and Rough Seas, and it's actually serving me pretty well. So, I like that. As for the tools, two choice band to be able to hit harder hit those magic numbers with super zap cannon knock out those basics in stage ones and wide lens even though it's not going to be useful at all in this live just because we can't hit shaman for weakness on the bench because of a glitch still just i wanted to put it in this deck to show you where it belongs once the glitch is patched and finally seven five of lightning and grass so that we can strong charge for we can strong charge for two energy the vast majority of the time but also have more lightning because that's what our pokemon rely on so yeah that is the deck guys and uh yeah let's go ahead and see it in action Alrighty, we have found one against a uh, duels for dollars with a psychic and normal deck so uh really not sure what my opponent is going to be running i mean if this is garbador we are going to be in a very very bad position but luckily we do win the coin flip so we will get to go first and at the very least i can potentially knock out some of his stuff before it gets going and i start off with actually a very nice hand i have a i mean i have pretty much everything i can play out except i don't have a um i don't have a supporter or any means of draw however i do have plenty of ways of drawing out of that and well lily definitely works so what i'm going to do is force a giant plants go ahead and level ball for a charge bug to be able to evolve my grubbin immediately let's go ahead and choice band that thing up evolve it and play the lightning energy onto it and then finally lily for a six card hand which is incredibly nice and ooh, this is even better so i get another grubbin down uh, i'm gonna ultra ball probably just grab another charge bug i really have no reason to uh i really have no reason to play my hand down that much and let's actually just get rid of the energy recycler and the hex maniac i mean i could have ultra balled away the lightning energy and then energy recycler that thing back but then i would be using more resources but i mean either way i have a very very solid start what i can't even do next turn is ultra ball uh, get rid of the sycamore and potentially whatever i draw to be able to grab a vika volt and actually because my opponent started shaman I can even knock it out with Vika Volt's just regular attacks, so I'd be able to uh, accelerate energy while also taking two prizes. So uh, my opponent's playing 
Oh, so this is probably a probably a Toxapex GX deck. I mean, if that was, I'd I'd have to guess that that was what it was gonna be. Um, my opponent does get a Marini down choice bands and then Sycamores. That's oh boy, we see the Garbodor. So this could actually get kind of messy if my opponent's able to get enough uh, able to get enough Trubbishes in play to where he can continually bring out Garbodor. So this is a Garbodor Toxapex GX deck, which is actually really really interesting. Uh, that's something that I really haven't seen, but, I mean, it's still a very cool idea. I draw into another Grubbin, which is really nice. So what I am going to do is just Ultra Ball, get rid of the Lightning and the VS Seeker. Uh, do I want to grab a Charge Bug or Vika Volt? I think, for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a Vika Volt. That way I guaranteed have the Knockout on the Shaman. Uh, I mean, I could, if I get the right cards, I could go for the GX attack, which would knock out the Marini, but... Unfortunately, I do not, so let's go ahead and just evolve another Charger Bug, play the Lightning onto my v and then I'm going to hold on to the Coco and the Lele in my hand, just, I mean, I have no reason to play those guys down. Let's accelerate another Lightning onto my v and then take a couple prize cards. I get, well, get another v for energy acceleration and a Grass Energy, so this is a very, very, very good start. I mean, I have a v up turn two. I have two Charge Bug waiting to turn into Vika Volt. I have potentially Tapu Coco in my hand, depending on how much damage my opponent is able to do to me. And luckily, Garbodor isn't even going to be hitting for a ton of damage yet. So, I mean, I'm even in a great position with that. Uh, my opponent does get a Toxpex GX, which I will actually be able to knock out in one hit uh, with, well... Not with my choice band anymore, because my opponent's going to get rid of that. And while I am bummed that my opponent got rid of my choice band, I'm actually really, really happy that plays like that are able to be made in this format. Because, I mean, we just had zero tool hate in before uh, Guardians Rising came out. And the fact that plays like that are now able to be made just makes me actually really, really happy. Um, okay, so I'm going to Lele for a Skyla, see if I can get my other choice band, because then I'll be able to knock it out and... Okay, unfortunately my Skyla is prized, however, that Choice Band is in there. There's only one of them, so I'm just going to Lele. Uh, what do I want to grab? N or Sycamore, I think. Yeah, let's just grab an N because, I mean, at this point I have... I'm not... I could go for another Strong Charge. Or I could go, yeah. But let's... Well, not Strong Charge, but let's go ahead and just play the Energy onto my Vikavolt. I think at this point I might as well just go ahead and Coco. Play down Tapu Koko because my Vika Volt's damaged. I can potentially get that thing going next turn. Uh, I can potentially get my Vika Volt up next turn. I let Strong Charge power up my Vika Volt in the back. And also potentially the Lele as well. Um, let's see. I'm going to put the Grass Energy on the Lele. Just so I mean I have a yet another attacker. And then let's throw the Lightning onto the Vika Volt. So I can start using his attack next turn. And... You know what? Garbodor is too much of a threat. Yeah, my opponent will be able to knock me out with his GX attack next turn, but I don't necessarily care too much just because Garbodor is much bigger of a threat than Toxapex. So I'd Lysander that Trubbish in, and I even get a Lysander off my prizes. So that's that turn just kind of worked out. I was able to preserve resources, and yeah, my opponent will be able to go for a Toxic Shelter GX. Oh boy, my opponent might be getting another Trubbish back out. Oh, okay, he just uses the uh, Super Rod side of the Rescue Stretcher, which is bad, but not the worst thing in the world. I mean, that's something that we can tolerate, just having it put back into the deck. And, yeah, Toxic Shelter with a... Uh, toxic Shelter with a... <laughs> with a Choice Band. Sorry, I couldn't remember what that item was called. Is going to be able to knock me out and also give my opponent immunity from attacks this next turn. However, I do have... A Lysander in my hand and now my opponent's damage output is going to be significantly lowered yeah he can get 100 damage each turn with uh with his with his poison but overall like I don't mind that much and unfortunately I get a ton of energy in the discard pile which is something that I definitely do not like especially with my energy recycler being gone and you know what because of this I actually think that I'm going to try to I'm gonna to try to use uh, I'm gonna to try to use Brock's grit in the next match just because I mean I'm I'm torn between energy recycler and Brock's grit. Energy recycler means that you can still use the supporter for the turn, but Brock's grit is something that you can discard early game and still have access to it later 
with uh, and still have access to it later with VS Seeker. So I have a ton of lightning in the discard pile. I'm trying to decide which one I want to discard. And I actually think the grass is the one to discard just because the lightning is the only one that is necessary to be able to attack and let's strong charge. Okay, I only have two energy left. Let's throw the grass onto the Lele and the lightning onto the Vika Volt. And then let's throw another grass onto the Lele. That way I can knock out the Trubbish in one hit. Just take that threat off the board. Unfortunately, Trubbish has 70 HP and not 60, which is definitely an issue. <laughs> Meaning that I had to play that extra energy on there. But now at this point, I'm in a phenomenal position because I'm two prizes away. Tapu Lele can do really significant damage to this tox specs yeah the poison can be a problem but overall i don't think it'll be too much of an issue okay we see my opponent brings out my vika volt which is i mean it's not a problem because the vika volt gx has one retreat cost yet regular vika volt has three i'm really not sure what the logic was on that but i mean i'm not complaining because i can definitely take advantage of it i draw into a grubbin i really don't need it i have two v oh actually i have three vika volts two vika volt gx's and Unfortunately, I do not draw into the choice band, so I'm not able to take a one-hit knockout on my opponent's Toxapex, so I am just going to try to thin the deck a little bit more. Um, yeah, there's still Forest, there's Rough Seas in there as well, but it's something that I don't that I can't necessarily rely on. So let's go ahead and wide lens up my Vika Volt on the bench. Um, I'm not going to be able to use my GX attack unfortunately because i just don't well i mean i have enough on the active vika volt but there's no reason to go for that right now so what i am going to do is just retreat into i think retreat into lele just because i need a lot of damage on the board considering my opponent is well considering i'm not going to be able to have enough energy to go for the big attack with vika volt i won't be able to finish off this uh finish off this Toxapex with a big attack, so I have to just try to two-hit knockout uh, the Toxapex in the most efficient way possible, and I think that's with Lele, because what my opponent can do is he can go ahead and attack me, which puts damage on me. Actually, wait. If he gets a... Okay, he needs to get... How many heads? He needs to get two... Oh, he only needs to get two heads on Spike Cannon in order to knock me out, which is kind of scary. Actually, that's a huge problem. If my opponent gets two heads on Spike Cannon, he'll knock me. He can knock me out. But unfortunately, he does not go for that. Actually, you know what? No, Tapu Lele doesn't have weakness. So yeah, uh, he just goes for the Super Poison. But I mean, now I'm able to just take the victory with an Energy Drive, knock out the Toxapex GX, and yeah, that's the game. So there's the Skyla that I needed. So that I needed earlier in the game. I mean, if I had the Skyla, I would have won a lot earlier. But I'm, guys, I'm so happy that Field Blower is in the format right now. I mean, it's... Yeah, it it bummed me out that my opponent was able to keep me from taking an Oko on his Toxapex, but it just makes me so happy that plays like that are able to be made and more thought and strategy has to go in to how you're going to win the game. So yeah, that was a pretty solid first match. Unfortunately, Energy Recycler did a whole lot of nothing. So I'm going to switch over to Brock Grit, see if that brings me uh, any better luck and also to show off both versions of this deck, one with Energy Recycler and one with Brock Grit. Alrighty, we have found another one with Shamey, 1323 with a pure water deck. So uh, I'm actually kind of interested to see what the pure water is. I mean, usually you see at least like Shaman or Talon Flame in the case of Greninja Break. And actually, I think Greninja Break might make a little bit, actually, hmm. I can't decide if Greninja Break is going to make a comeback or not because you have so much bulkier Pokemon. I guess it still would, but Field Blower is a godsend for Greninja, so I very well might do a deck list of that in the future. But, ooh, we start off with a pretty... Okay, we start off with a good hand, assuming I can get a Forest of Giant Plants. Otherwise, I'll just have to get rid of Charge Bug, and that's not something i want to do um maybe if my opponent has lightning weak pokemon i can take advantage of wide lens otherwise it won't be doing much and okay this is a pre-marina gx deck that's actually really really cool and i'm i'm, I'm a fan of that i really have wanted to try pre-marina gx in this new format as well because of aqua patch being able to just throw a bunch of energy onto the field like combine aqua patch with max elixir and you just have an energy explosion onto the field unfortunately i don't think it'll be 
Well, unfortunately, I think that uh, the fact that Premier Marine is a stage two is going to hinder it a ton. But for the time being, I'm going to Ultra Ball, get rid of the Wide Lens because I don't need it at all, as well as the Hex Maniac to grab. Yeah, I need to grab a Shaman just so I can get some more draw. I mean, I could have grabbed a Lele, but I just want a little bit extra draw for the time being. Let's go ahead and level ball for another Grubbin. Looks like two Grubbin are prized, and that is... That's very, that's not good. That's very not good. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and Shaman for four more cards, see if we can get something good. And that counts as good. Drawing into two Charge Bugs and a Force of Giant Plants definitely counts as good. So unfortunately, I will have to end, which gives my opponent a fresh hand, even though they did not play a support of that turn. And okay, I just draw into a bunch of energy. Um, not necessarily what I wanted, but it's what I'm going to live with at this point. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I really did not like giving my opponent a fresh hand, but I needed to try to get something ready for next turn. I suppose I could have just sat on the end and potentially not given my opponent another turn or an a fresh hand because they clearly had nothing. They didn't even have energy, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I end my opponent into what is what looks to be a very solid hand. Well, yeah, we see a dive ball. We see an energy. Luckily, my opponent did not have an attachment first turn, so... I mean, I'm still, I'm still kind of on the front foot because he has to wait another, uh, another turn to be able to Aqua Turbo, and let's go ahead and energy up the Charge Bug, and I hate to end my opponent again because we didn't see the, uh, because we didn't see another supporter, but I have to because I don't want to just get rid of all of those energy on the field. Like that is just, that is just not ideal at all. Um, wow. So I get a good hand. I. Unfortunately, don't get a Vika Volt that I want. If I had another Charge Bug out, I would immediately start going for that. But for the time being, I mean, I won't get anything off Charge Beam, but I mean, 50 damage is 50 damage. I can always just Lele for a Sycamore or something next turn to be able to get another Vika Volt set up and going. So I'm in a, I'm in a solid spot. I can Oko Palkia. I can Oko Manaphy. Um... Pre-Marine is going to be a little bit of a pain. We see the Rough Seas come down. Luckily, I will actually be able to take advantage of that. Which, I mean, you saw by the fact that I run Rough Seas in the deck as well. So, uh, the experience share comes down. So, my opponent's starting to get set up. And this is pretty... This is pretty scary. Oh, we see a Lapras come down as well. So, my opponent's getting set up, which is pretty scary. Um, the thing with Pre-Marina is it's a slow enough deck to where it's not threatening a lot of the more top tier decks early on because, I mean, it takes two turns to set up. It takes even longer to get a sufficient amount of energy on the field just because you have to run such a heavy line of Pre-Marina. Then you also have to run support Pokemon, support items and all that. My opponent does just decide to Lysander up my Charge Bug. So that actually saves him from being knocked out this turn, and I will... I will definitely need to try to get a Tapu Koko so that I can at least attack this turn. I get an N. So let's go ahead and take advantage of the Rough Seas, play the Energy onto the Vika Volt, and then I'm going to Lele just because I'm not going to give my opponent another fresh hand. I mean, I've I've done that too much thus far. Yeah, I do have to get rid of a Vika Volt Charge Bug and a Rare Candy, but whatever i can recycle the charge bug vehicle later with brock Scrit if i need to i just need a way of getting a coco which i do so that's pretty nice let's get rid of the rough seas and a lightning to grab a i want to grab a vika volt yeah I, I need to i just need to plain and simple um i could have grabbed a tapu coco but if i did and I went ahead and used its ability arrow trail to go active I wouldn't be able to attack so really I just don't draw into what I need to and my opponent's Lysander is actually coming through for him in this situation which is very unfortunate so I'm just going to start powering up my Lele fully power up my Vika Volt and unfortunately Vika Volt's attack will not or Vika Volt's GX attack will not be doing anything in this matchup because two turns of rough seas just eliminates all the damage that I spread around to my opponent's bench my opponent obviously does not play any shaman otherwise we would have seen the normal type when we came up against them so looks like Tapu Koko's GX attack is going to come through and I mean I'm actually kind of okay with it because as far as I know the glitch has not been fixed yet to where wide lens does not work on Tapu Koko's attack but my opponent just goes Lapras, collects, that's a that's a good play. Um, gets three cards, which actually makes it a lot better for me. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and strong charge, just get more energy on the board. One more lightning and a grass. So let's throw the grass on Lele and then a lightning. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Because, I mean, I'm going to be searching for a Tapu Koko, like plain and simple. So it really doesn't overall matter where I put the lightning. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on my active Vikavolt just because. Uh, play the lightning down, just get more energy in play via Seeker for that end. And now I'm okay with giving my opponent a fresh hand because, I mean, he essentially got one with being able to collect for three cards. So it gives him, so it technically gives him an extra hand or an extra couple cards. But, I mean, it doesn't really impact. It really doesn't, or well, not extra cards. It only gives him one extra card, which I'm okay with. It's better than giving him a full hand after he only had two. So let's go ahead and finally get that Tapu Koko down. I'm holding on to the Choice Band for now, just because I don't know when I'll need it. For the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and take a one-hit knockout on this Lapras with a Tapu Thunder. So, yeah, let's knock out the Lapras. Um, unfortunately, oh, what I could have done. Hmm. Actually, what I could have... Ah, crap. So, really, just the fact that my opponent Lysander Dvikavolt active was all sorts of bad, because I... I mean, I could have knocked out the Lapras with a Choice Banded... Um, with a Choice Banded attack from my Vikavolt and saved Tapu Thunder to be able to one-shot a Primarina, but unfortunately, I just did not have the resources at this point to be able to take full advantage of that. So, I mean, I just... I kind of had to do that play. I mean, it takes a knockout, it puts pressure on my opponent. I can always Lysander up the Manaphy as a prize later in the game. And at this point, I can just retreat into my Vikavolt to be in a position to uh, one-shot the Palkia and potentially win the game. So my opponent does get his first Primarine out. There are five energy on the board. It's starting to get a little bit scary because when Primarina, well, especially with the EXP share, if Primarina gets a bunch of energy on the board, it is a Pokemon that is incredibly difficult to take down. Even if you do take it down, that's only two energy. And if your opponent has EXP shares everywhere, then that energy is just going to stay on the board. So Primarina, once it gets set up, I, in my opinion, it's actually scarier than Turbo Darkrai just because you also have free retreat. But I think Turbo Darkrai is overall better just because of its speed. Oh boy, this is starting to get very scary. Because my opponent gets another, hits another Max Elixir, gets another EXP share onto a Poplio. Ooh, this is this is getting hairy. This is getting a little bit hairy. I have to be, I have to be very careful. Luckily, that Manaphy is there, and that is just an easy knockout with any attack from Tapu Koko, Vikavolt, Vikavolt. Um, Lele needs more energy on it in order for it to be able to one shot the Manaphy. But uh, I just need to take another knockout on uh i need to take a knockout on my opponent's palkia and then i'm just a lysander away from winning the game with tapu koko or vika volt so that's that's what i'm going to be playing towards um let's go ahead and rough seas actually take advantage of that i will be able to take a knockout on my opponent's palkia this turn so let's go ahead and strong charge get a grass energy onto the vika volt and then another energy onto the lele just so i can have that thing as an attacker um let's band let's ban the lele as well so that if I can get, I just need two more energy on the Lele in order to be able to uh, one-shot the Manaphy with Lele as well. And then I'm going to put a Grass Energy. Where do I want to put it? I think I'll just put it on the Vikavolt. That way I still have the opportunity to uh, attack next turn. Or I have, the attempt to, uh, I have the ability to Super Zap Cannon just with a manual attachment or just one energy attachment. That way I can try to put some stuff on Tapu Koko as well to be able to attack. So yeah, let's take a knockout on the Palkia, be two prizes away, and literally just a Lysander away from winning the game. So I mean, my opponent's energy is going to stay on board, and at this point he is all set up with his, uh, with his Primarinas to be able to start doing some very heavy damage to me, which is a little bit scary. Actually, by a little bit, I mean quite a bit scary. Um, also, I have to Brock's Grit in order to get the energy back into the deck. Unfortunately, it's still in there. I haven't drawn into it, so I can't just VS Seeker for it this turn. I have to I have to Sycamore, then draw into it, so I essentially just waste a turn of strong charging. And my opponent... Is my opponent AFK? Because, I mean, they're taking a while to put the... Uh, to select energy with Max Elixir, which, I mean, you just put both the energy onto the Brion and the Poplio. 
I mean, there's no, there's not really any thinking about it. My opponent might be lagging a little bit as well. I really hope TCG doesn't, TCGO doesn't kick me off at this point because I'm actually in position to win the game. But <laughs> all I need is a Lysander. Well, actually, no. At this point, I need Brock Script plus Lysander to win the game just because I didn't spread my... Uh, I was dumb. Okay, so I, I screwed up on that. I should have put another energy... And not on the Tapu Lele, I should have just put another energy on the Vikavolt. That way I do have a Super Zap Cannon ready to be able to one-shot Palkia or Manaphy. That way all I needed was a Lysander. So I did misplay. I definitely misplayed right there by not powering up uh, Vikavolt. I just spread my energy a little bit too much. I was trying to be a little too conservative. I wasn't as aggressive as I needed to be. And now my opponent is going to be able to end me down to two um i think i'm still in such a good position that i think i have the ch i have an opportunity to win but i definitely did misplay by not spreading out my energy as much as i should have and i very well might be paying for it because my opponent gets another pre-marina set up in the background and has i mean he has another pop leo he has energy and bubble beat is going to start doing a ton of damage 170 yeah it'll knock out Coco and Lele. I get a VS Seeker. So this was where I screwed up. If I had just put the energy on Vikavolt, I have the win right here. I could have just Lysandered up the Manaphy and won the game. But unfortunately, I did make a pretty big misplay by not putting the energy onto the Manaphy or onto the onto the Vikavolt. I put it on the Lele instead. So yeah, I screwed up. I admit that. And it uh, looks like I'm probably going to start paying for it at this point. Uh, I can, what do I want to do? I can Lysander up something and try to stall, but I think at this point I just need to, I just need to get a fresh hand, try to draw into something that can, that can start me off on the right track. I get a, I get a field blower, which I can use to get rid of, what can I get rid of? I can use it to get rid of EXP shares or rough seas. So what I think I'm going to have to do is just give up my Lele this turn. So ultimately, Lele is not only going to cost me uh, my chance to win this turn, it's also going to cost me a couple prizes. So definite, definitely a misplay on my part. But I am going to go ahead and get rid of that Rough Seas and the EXP share on the Poplio, and then retreat into my Lele. Get rid of the Grass Energy. That way, I mean, I just need a Brox Grit next turn. I need to Brox Grit in order to be able to get energy back so that I can strong charge into Super Zap Cannon. But Energy Drive will be doing, I mean, it will be doing 130, which is nothing to scoff at at all. Yeah, my opponent will just retreat into his other, uh, <laughs> into his other pre-marina and then just start healing up maybe with the, if, it, if he has another rough seas. So this is not looking good at this point. Yeah, my and I even knew that my opponent had an N in his hand too. So there was just... Ugh, this is this is starting to look bad. I luckily draw into the Brox Grit. So at the very least, I'll be able to start strong charging, put six energy back into the deck, and my opponent's going to get yet another Pre-Marina. So this is starting to look very scary. Because my opponent, yeah, that's what he can do. With the Manaphy, he can just retreat, bubble beat, knock out my Tapu Lele, and now I'm just in a uh, in a very bad spot. I'm going to promote the Vika Volt because I can go ahead and strong charge this turn. Like, I mean, I can at least do that. Let's play let's play Brock's Grit. I mean, I have to in order to be able to do any significant damage this turn. And then I just have to put three and three of each energy back into the deck. And this is why I like Brock's Grit because it's a little bit stronger and you can recur it later in the game if you need to, even though I did just draw into it. So just as good as Energy Recycler in that case. But, I mean, I... I'll, also possibly could have end but either way at this point i am just going to super zap cannon if i can draw okay at this point honestly i just win if i get a lysander like that's all i need is i just need to draw a vs seeker a lele or a lysander and i'm able to win the game like no two ways about it if i get that i win the game and i have enough outs that i think i should be able to get it i mean i should be able to get it pretty well, relatively easily. Not pretty easily, but relatively easily. Because, I mean, I have Ultra Ball into Lele. I have Lele itself. I have Lysander. I have, uh... 
I don't have Shaman anymore, unfortunately. But I mean, I have... All I need to do is just Ultra Ball into Lele. I need a top deck a Lysander. I need a top deck a uh, VS Seeker. And I will win the game. And my opponent goes for a Grand Echo. I mean, that's... I mean, that's a good play by them. That way I can't even chip them down at all. So let's go ahead and just level ball, get that thing out of the deck, and play the Grubbin down. That way I don't draw into it. And then I just have to end for two cards. Well, first let's Strong Charge. That way I don't draw into any of those either. Put. Let's go ahead and put two on the Volt actually. That way I can still Super Zap Cannon, make my opponent deal with the threat in front of him, and then just end. I don't draw into any of those. So that's a little bit scary. Uh, do I want to play the grass down? I think... Well, I mean, the fact that I drew into a grass is very unfortunate because now, I mean, I can't... I cannot uh, supercharge. Or I cannot... Yeah. I cannot charge into it, which, with my Vikavolt, and if I discarded that with Ultra Ball, then I would just lose the game anyway. So I do just have to go for that. The Super Zap Cannon... Uh, hit the Primarina for 180 damage. Yeah, my opponent is going to be able to knock out my Volt this turn, but if I draw into Lysander, Lele, or VS Seeker, I will win the game. Luckily, my opponent bought me a turn by Grand Echoing. I mean, that that was a... I mean, yeah, he healed off a ton of damage of his Primarinas, but I think if he just attacked into my Volt and knocked it out, then I would have had to promote a two-prizer or a very heavy single prize Vika Volt, which could have bought him more time. So, okay, I win the game. I uh, luckily top deck a Lysander. Then again, I did have enough outs to where I think, I mean, I think that two turns were in my favor to be able to win, but I am just going to go ahead and Lysander in the Manaphy. And it, ultimately, my opponent Grand Echoing did cost in the game because it bought me another turn to be able to draw into that Lysander to win the game. So yes, I did misplay on the Lele, but luckily I was able to top deck out of it in the end of the game, get that Lysander when I needed it, and knock out the Manaphy for the win. So that was a very, very, very close game against a really cool deck. I mean, my opponent's deck was awesome and it obviously worked incredibly well. Just, I was able to get started much faster than them in that four prize lead. I was able to build up, yeah, it did hurt me with N late game, but all I needed was just a knockout on that weak Manaphy on the bench to be able to take it, which I eventually did get with the Lysander. So I misplayed, but was still able to come through in the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Vika Volt showcase. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.